Hello, and welcome to Rolls Theorem. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas, El Paso, and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. This lecture is for calculus at the University of Texas, El Paso, UTEP. Chapter 3, Applications of Differentiation, comes to us from Larson's 11th edition calculus text. Section 3.2, Rolle's Theorem and the Mean Value Theorem. I'm going to break this one into two parts so it doesn't get too long. So part one, we're going to talk about Rolle's Theorem. In part two, I'll talk about the Mean Value Theorem. So what is Rolle's Theorem? Rolle's Theorem states, we're going to let F be continuous on the closed interval from A to B and is going to be differentiable on the open interval uh, from A to B. If f of a is equal to f of b, then there is at least one number c in the open interval from a to b, such that f prime of c equals zero. So let's see what this setup is. So our function f is continuous on the closed interval, which means it's continuous at the endpoints as well. The derivative exists everywhere between the endpoints. And if f of a is equal to f of b, then it must be that somewhere along the way, we have a value c that has a horizontal tangent line, right? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line. If the slope of the tangent line is zero, that's a horizontal tangent line. <clears throat> so let's find the two x-intercepts of the function f and show that the derivative is equal to zero at some point in between the x-intercepts. And this is a direct application of Rolle's theorem because two x-intercepts, they're gonna have the same y value. So f of a will equal f of b if our endpoints are at the x-intercepts. Number one, f of x equals x times x minus three, nice in factored form. The x-intercepts occur when the y value is zero, so this is when x is zero, and when x is equal to three. I can find my derivative, uh, so I, I know my endpoints, my a value is zero, my b value is three. If I find the derivative, and I'm gonna leave it in this form and just use the product rule, it's going to be first, x, multiplied by the derivative of the second, which is one, plus second, that's x minus three, times the derivative of the first, which again is one. I'll have x plus x minus three, which gives us two x minus three. If I solve two x minus three, my derivative equal to zero, right, that's what I want to know, uh, show that the derivative is equal to zero between the x-intercepts, let's see, zero equals two x minus three. Add three to both sides, we get three equals two x, divide by two and we get x equals two-thirds. The derivative is zero at two-thirds, right? exactly what we're looking for, and two-thirds is in between the x-intercepts of zero and three. We found the two x-intercepts and we showed that the derivative is equal to zero at some point between them. So let's do it again. If f of x equals negative three x times the square root of x plus one, I know my x-intercepts occur when the y value is zero. So uh, to get a product of zero, it must be that either the first part is zero, the first factor, negative three x equals zero, tells me x equals zero, or the second part, uh, the second factor, the square root of x plus one is equal to zero, and the square root of x plus one is only equal to zero when x is negative one. So I have my x-intercepts negative one and zero, if I put them in order of the number line. My derivative, oh yeah, so first, negative three x, Derivative of the second. The derivative of the square root of x plus one will be one half, x plus one to the negative one half, and then I would multiply by one, which I didn't type here. Don't forget the derivative of the inside. In this case, it's one, uh, so you don't have to have it there because it's, it's there, but don't forget about it for other potential problems. Uh, first derivative of the second plus second, square root of x plus one times the derivative of the first, that's a negative three. So my derivative, let me see, we're going to put this 2 in the denominator, the square root of x plus 1 is in the denominator, my minus 3x is in the numerator. I'm going to bring this negative 3, since I'm multiplying up in front as a coefficient, minus 3, square root of x plus 1. Still have some work to do on this, we're looking for where the derivative is 0. So I'm going to take my derivative and set it equal to 0. I'm going to add a 3 square root of x plus 1 to both sides. Now, anytime I have a denominator, I'm gonna multiply both sides of my equation by my denominator to see if I could cancel it out. And when I multiply the right-hand side by two times the square root of x plus one, it cancels and I'm left with a negative three x. On the left, when I multiply by two times the square root of x plus one, I'll have two times three, which is six. The square root of x plus one, 
times the square root of x plus 1 gives us the radicand x plus 1. Distribute. 6x plus 6 equals a negative 3x. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. I'll have 6 equals a negative 9x. Uh, x equals 6 over negative 9, which simplifies to be x equals negative 2 thirds. And look at that, negative 2 thirds is in between the x-intercepts of negative 1 and 0. All right, so now let's deal with Rolle's theorem directly. Determine whether Rolle's theorem can be applied to f on the closed interval. If Rolle's theorem can be applied, find all values c in the open interval such that f prime of c equals 0. If Rolle's theorem cannot be applied, explain why not. Okay, so our function f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4 on the closed interval from 1 to 4. In order to know if Rolle's theorem can be applied, we have to ask ourselves, is the function continuous on the closed interval? Yes, because it's a polynomial. Is the function deriv uh, differentiable? Does the derivative exist on the open interval? This should be an open interval. I typed that incorrectly, so let's fix that. Differentiable on the open interval? Yes, still a polynomial. Is f of 1 equal to f of 4? Yes, because they happen to be the x-intercepts of this particular graph. Excuse me, of the graph of this particular function. So now we can work on finding this value of c. So the setup, the hypothesis holds for Rolle's theorem. So we're going to work on the conclusion. The derivative, f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. The derivative is a 5, uh, f prime of x equals 2x minus 5. If f prime of c equals 0, I'm going to replace my x with a c. 0, derivative is 0, equals 2c minus 5. Add 5, divide by 2. I'll get a c value of 5 halves, which is in our interval. Everything works great. <clears throat> f of x equals x to the 2 thirds minus 1 on the interval from negative 8 to 8. It's still the same thing. We're going to determine if Rolle's theorem can be applied. If so, we're going to find c. If not, we're going to explain why not. Now, I know x to the 2 thirds minus 1 is continuous uh, from negative 8 to 8. Is it differentiable? Well, the derivative is 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. And if I were to write that in radical notation, it would be 2 over 3 times the cube root of x. So is this differentiable? It's not differentiable at x equals 0. And since we have a problem, the derivative does not exist in our interval, Rolle's theorem will not apply. I don't have to go any further. I'm done. Continuous, yes. Differentiable, no. All right, walk away. Another one. f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x plus 2. Notice that the function is not defined at negative 2. Negative 2 is not in our interval. Our interval is from negative 1 to 3. So it's continuous on its domain, on the given domain, excuse me. I find the derivative using a quotient rule, so that's low x plus 2, d high, 2x minus 2, minus high x squared minus 2x minus 3, d low, 1, over low squared. I'm going to multiply x times 2x to get 2x squared, x times minus 2 to get minus 2x, 4x, and then minus 4. Distribute my negative sign and multiply by 1 at the same time because, yeah, I could do that. Minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Combine like terms and I will get x squared plus 4x minus 1 over x plus 2. So how does that help us? Well, I know that the function is not continuous at negative 2. I also know the derivative does not exist at negative 2. But negative 2 is not in our interval, so it doesn't matter. If I evaluate the original function at negative 1, I get 0, and if I evaluate the original function at 3, I also get 0. Rolle's theorem states, if the function is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval, and the values of the endpoints are equal, then we can find the c value. So now we have the setup, we know we can find the c, let's do that. So I set my derivative equal to 0, evaluated at c, I'm looking for a particular c value. Uh, a rational expression, c squared plus 4c minus 1, all over c plus 2 squared, is 0 when the numerator is 0. 
That's because we're going to multiply both sides by the c plus 2 squared. On the right, it'll cancel out. On the left, it's times 0. So we'll end up with 0 equals the numerator. Using the quadratic formula, we'll have c equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. However, negative 2 minus the square root of 5 is not in our interval, so it's not a valid answer. Negative 2 plus the square root of 5, which is approximately 0.236, is in the interval. This is the only C value that I would report. I would use negative 2 plus the square root of 5 if I needed an exact answer. However, if my homework states round to three decimal places or whatever the case might be, then I would pull out the calculator and actually find the decimals. If it doesn't tell you how to round, don't round. Use the exact value. All right, number four, f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x. Uh, I know that this function is not continuous when x is 0. 0 is in the interval, so Rolle's theorem doesn't apply. I like it when they're easy like that. Let it go. Now let's do trig. If g of x is equal to cosine of x on the interval from 0 to 2 pi, first of all, we know Cosine is continuous everywhere, and we know the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x, and it is differentiable also everywhere. Uh, I know that the cosine of 0 and the cosine of 2 pi both equal 1, and therefore they're equal. The values that endpoints are equal. Continuous differentiable values of the endpoints are equal. I know Rolle's theorem applies. So I'm going to find the derivative. f prime of x equals minus sine of x, and then... I'll set my derivative equal to 0. f prime of c equals 0. When does negative sine of c equal 0? Well, that's when c is 0, pi, and 2 pi. 0, pi, and 2 pi, they're all three in this interval. But the theorem states that c will be in the open interval. So the only value we can keep is pi. So we can't use the endpoints A or B. We can only use the value C that is in between them. So C equals pi is the only answer for the uh, value in the interval such that F prime of C equals zero given to us by Rolle's theorem. That's it for part one. Make sure you keep listening for part two on the mean value theorem.